How many people like free stuff? Let's learn how to get free stuff with Twitter and Python. Let's give, uh, let's give our next speaker a big hand. So have you guys ever had an idea uh, that you tried and it worked like a hundred times better than you possibly could have hoped? This is one of those ideas. Um, if I had to summarize this talk in one slide, it would be this. Uh, this is from the movie Real Genius, if you've never seen it. Val Kilmer, so good. Uh, so my name is Hunter, I'm a computer engineer, and I work for a startup in Silicon Valley that you've never heard of. Um, so this started when I was on Twitter and saw that there was a bunch of contests, and all you have to do to enter them is retweet them. I was like, well, I can write a script to do that. So I'm sure you guys have all seen this comic. It's the XKCD where he writes a script to buy something on eBay every day for $1 with free shipping. The idea is that like, you get all these packages showing up at your house and you don't know what's in them, and that's super fun. And it kind of backfires on him because at the end he gets put on an FBI watch list because it buys all this really suspicious stuff. So this is kind of what I was going for. Um, and it basically worked because it was actually a little better because I didn't have to pay any money. Um, and as far as I know, I didn't end up on any watch list because of this particular project, but I'm, you, know, you can never be sure. Um, so here's the Twitter account that I set up. Um, you'll see that I really didn't try to be stealthy at all. Um, this is a default picture from Windows because I was too lazy to Google for anything else. And um, it turns out you don't have to be stealthy, and this seems to work anyway, which is kind of interesting. So how hard could it possibly be? Um, you look for contests, and then you retweet them, uh, and then you're done. So I started with the terms you might expect, variants of retweet to win, and I was using the Twitter API, just Tweepy in Python. Um, unfortunately, the Twitter API has a bunch of rate limits in it, so this is kind of lame because it means you have to add a bunch of delays, which means you can't enter as many as you otherwise would be able to. So the first thing I did to get around this was um, rather than use the API to search, I just scraped the Twitter search results page. And this works because you don't have to be signed in to use the search page. All you got to do is um, make your request of whatever search term you want as fast as you want. And then uh, I used Beautiful Soup to go through and pull out all of the tweets that looked like contests. And then I stored their unique tweet ID so I didn't have to check later to see if I had already retweeted that because there's a lot of uh, overlap between search results. Uh, as you start doing this, you'll notice that there's a lot of contests that require you to be following the person to win. So this is a pretty easy modification to make. You just uh, regex against it and see if they ask you to follow. And if they do, then you follow them. The problem comes when uh, you start following about person number 2,000 because Twitter has a limit that if you don't have any followers or you have an under a threshold number that uh, you have to, you can't follow more than 2,000 people. So, okay, I need more followers. So what's the easiest way to get more followers? Buy them. Um, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is Fiverr, um, and this here is actually a bad deal, 500 followers for $5. Um, I paid $5 and I got about 4,000 followers. Um, also, I can guarantee you that they are not real Twitter followers. Um, this, like, so this works okay. Um, I mean, 4,000 people did actually show up, which was nice. Unfortunately, uh, it's pretty easy to tell that they're not real people. Some of them still had, like, the egg as their uh, profile picture. And if you went into any of their profiles, it was clear they're not real people. And I'm sure if you did any kind of network analysis, you would find that they were all highly connected to each other. Um, so at this point, this is uh, the output of the script. Basically, I'm just, I've extended the number of search terms now, so I have quite a few. And by the end of this, um, I'm fairly confident that I was covering almost every single contest that was launched on Twitter. Um, so this was a pretty long list of search terms. You know, you just kind of guess and check to see what people use when they're trying to launch a contest. So uh, you go through the search results, looping through each time and see, okay, is this a good contest? If it does, have we already entered it? If not, then enter it. Uh, do we need to follow them? Ha are we already following them? If we're not, then follow them. So to get around the follower problem, um, I just built a FIFO, which is a pretty obvious solution. Um, it's 2,000 people long, and so whenever we need to follow someone new, we kick out the very last person and pop on the new first person. And um, this had a couple, I, well, I got lucky in a couple ways here. First of all, um, it turns out that the length of a contest is shorter than how long it takes one name to propagate all the way down to the bottom of the list, which means I basically was never unfollowing someone too early. Their contest had already ended. The other way I got lucky was the total number of contests that were launched on Twitter it was low enough that I was able to enter every single one of them without hitting up uh, any rate limits once I implemented a few of these uh, tricks here. 
And there's a side effect here, which is that I guess it's some people, when you follow them, they automatically follow you back. There's a lot of bot activity on Twitter and scripts and services and things. I didn't realize how much there was until I started interacting with like thousands of these things. But um, the way it works is like you'll follow them and they'll say, oh great, thanks, and they'll automatically follow you back, but then when you unfollow them later, they don't unfollow you back. So my follower count started increasing with like increasingly legitimate looking accounts, companies and people and stuff that were running these things. Um, so I kind of got a bonus there that I was, the total number of people that I, uh, I was able to follow kept going up as I did this. So then I tried to figure out uh, how I could parallelize this and run multiple accounts at the same time. Um, I should say that the majority of the time that I was running this, I was actually only using a single account. But um, if you want to make multiple, this is what I try to do. So to use the Twitter API, you need a developer account, which means you need a phone number. And so I need to get another phone number. Okay, I can use Google Voice. Well, to activate Google Voice, you need a phone number. Okay, so I can use Twilio to make a phone number to activate Google Voice account to activate Twitter. You can't use Twilio to activate Twitter because Twitter somehow knows you're using a Twilio number. And now I think even Google Voice knows if you're using a Twilio number. I don't know how that works. So if you know how they're able to tell that, let me know because I'm really curious how that works. Uh, over the course of doing this, of course, I had a lot of interesting interactions with the great Twitter public. Um, so this was one uh, that I got busted on because this was when I was running two bots and um, I had different Twitter usernames, but I forgot to change the display name. So a person was running an account, uh, running a contest, and they were picking multiple winners, and I won multiple of the wins. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I, I got busted here and ditched this one. Um, another really great thing that I liked about this was some of the false positives I got. Some things look like contests, but they're not. Um, so this guy says, uh, retweet for a chance to win these Tupperware lids that have been warped in the dishwasher. <clears throat> must be following. <laughs> so dutifully, my script followed them and retweeted them. And uh, it actually won. The guy DM'd me. He was like, hey, man, you won those warped Tupperware lids. I was like, yes. <laughs> it was really disappointing, though, because he never actually mailed them to me. I was really hoping he would mail them to me, but he never did. Um, you get a lot of weird interaction between other bots when you do this kind of stuff. So this is an example where someone is running some kind of service that at the end of the week on Friday, they tweet out the top five people who retweeted you. So when you don't have that many people who retweet you, but you do have a bot following you that's retweeting everything that you tweet about your contest, and your script is not checking to see if those people are the same, then you get all five slots. So <laughs> my best retweets came from me and me and me and me and me. Uh, you also get asked for really weird stuff. Um, so the top one was someone, I don't know if this was an, a script or if it was like a person copying and pasting, um, but it was some like teenage girl who was trying to get people to retweet to get the attention of some like pop star she wanted to ask on a date or something. Um, so the fact that I was sent this makes me think that, I don't know, maybe she, I like to think that it's some like 14 year old girl slinging code somewhere like trying to get a date with this guy, but I don't know. Um, the middle one, like, Super weird, I don't understand what this is. Um, can you make it to my party? April 27th, 7 p.m., where snow forts comma sleet. Like, I don't know if this is, these seem like there may be some kind of spam or social engineering, I don't know what these are, but uh, they're almost certainly all not real people. Um, another, and the bottom one there is someone who is promoting my account. I have no clue why anyone would be motivated to do that. Uh, this is a DM I got that I thought initially, oh, someone sent me like some Rot 13 or something, but uh, no. <laughs> this is just how the kids are talking now, so. Um. And this was a really good one. This is uh, someone whose contest, the prize was an autograph by me. <laughs> what? So I don't understand, first of all, how they expected to pull this off. I have no clue who this person is. And I don't understand why anyone would be motivated to win an autograph by what is very clearly a like account that is only sending out contests. Um, so I couldn't figure out what the motivation behind this one is either, but it was surprising to run across. Sometimes my bot was accidentally a jerk. Um, like in this case, this is because of the FIFO. This person doesn't have a lot of followers and they ran a contest. So I entered because I found it and then I didn't win, so they got pushed off the bottom. Later they ran another one, so I followed them again. And like if you're a big company, you don't notice this kind of stuff, but if you're just like a person, they're like, oh man, I can't believe this person is only in it for the contest. <laughs> so, sorry man, I don't know who you are, but. This is another one of my favorites. Um, 
It looks exactly like a contest, except for you win absolutely nothing. Um, so, yeah, I enter that one too. <laughs> Only entry. Uh, here's one more false positive. I couldn't figure out why my bot entered this. It's a list of people's like, favorite cereals. Like, what? And I figured out, I think it's because of this word lucky here. Even though I wasn't actually looking for just the word lucky, um, for some reason I picked it up. The reason I was showing you these false positives is because I was not trying to like hone in on any particular contest or any particular prize or anything. Because I was able to enter everything that I could find, like, why not? You know, make your filter wide open. Um, you can't lose a contest that doesn't exist, but you can lose a contest that you don't find. So here is uh, the list of stuff that actually got shipped to my house. And I should point out that this is the stuff that managed to ship, which means it's not the huge list of stuff that wasn't physical, and it's not the list of stuff that uh, they wouldn't ship because I lived in the United States and I'd won the prize in some other country. Um, so some of the uh, some items to point out here. The top thing there is a, uh, an album. It's a vinyl, Papa Roach. Um, pretty great. A bunch of books and CDs, most of which were signed, which was cool. Uh, T-shirts, a lot of like stuff you would kind of get at like a career fair, you know, glasses and pens and stuff like that. Uh, 12 bottles of cherry juice, a uh, calendar of 365 cats, and my favorite physical thing that I got was that cowboy hat over there because that is a cowboy hat that is signed by the stars of a Mexican soap opera that I have never heard of before. <laughs> the reason I love it is because it's like the perfect example of the totally random stuff that showed up at my door that I would never have expected to get. Some people, like, when I uh, wrote about this, were saying, hey, you know, that's kind of lame because maybe there was someone who, like, was a huge fan of that Mexican soap opera and, like, they didn't get that thing and you did and it's wasted on you. And, like, I understand where they're coming from. To some extent, they're right. But I would say that I have exactly the same amount of appreciation, if not more, for that thing than they do, but for a totally different reason. Um, <laughs> so I think that's okay. There's a lot of weird uh, intangible stuff I got, too. Um, there was some restaurant in England that I won reservations to, like, 30 times in a row. Couldn't figure out why they weren't getting on to me. Um, I also won a, uh, there was some like cam girl who had a contest to win. She would write whatever you wanted on her body in chocolate sauce and take a picture of it and send it to you. So I won. And so I'm trying to think, all right, what can I have her write? So I tried to get her to write the Maxwell's equations, um, but <laughs> she didn't do it. It's kind of lame. Uh, if you want to see the full list of stuff, this is it. Um, there's a ton of stuff on here that I didn't cover because it's way too long, but it's fun to dig through there. There's uh, some really random stuff. Uh, so towards the end, I uh, tried to repurpose my bot for good because I noticed that there were some tweets uh, where you would retweet to uh, donate to stuff. People would say, retweet and I'll donate a dollar to some charity. I was like, well, I can add that to the end of the list. Why not? So some people like, actually appreciated it and they were like, hey, this is great because I had real followers at this point who were seeing it. But uh, even this backfired uh, at the end, unfortunately. Yep, retweeted that one. <laughs> All right, so the, the stats at the end here. Uh, I entered about 165,000 contests, and uh, on average, I won four contests per day, every day, for nine months straight. Um, so this works. <laughs> uh, the most a uh, valuable thing that I won was a $4,000 trip to Fashion Week in New York City. Uh, I did not actually redeem this prize because, first of all, they didn't pay for travel and I didn't live in New York. Second of all, I wasn't that interested in going to Fashion Week anyway. And third of all, you have to pay taxes on a $4,000 prize, which I was not psyched about. Um, if you're not from the U.S., you may be surprised to learn that you have to pay taxes on contest winnings in the United States. Uh, and speaking of that, yes, I paid the taxes on the things that I won. Uh, I never released the code for this in what may have been a futile attempt to try to uh, stem the flow of Twitter contest spam. Um, but I wrote about it and people made their own version anyway. So there's a whole bunch on GitHub if you want to look at some. Uh, most of them are fairly naive. I still get emails sometimes of people being like, hey man, I tried to make a version of that Python script and I got banned immediately. It's like, well, yeah. So if you, <laughs> if you look through some of these, there, there are some things that uh, in this talk that I don't think a lot of them implement that you could probably improve if you wanted to. Um, so if you want to keep me from winning a uh, contest, it's really simple. 
Um, obviously, I was not trying to do this stealthily, and it turns out that that didn't really matter. So if you're trying to prevent this kind of people from winning, then all you got to do is check to see if the person looks very obviously like a spam bot. If you would have gone to my page, you would have seen that it's tweeting contests every 30 seconds without sleeping ever. It's probably not a person. <laughs> um, weirdly, there were versions of this that I found. I was looking before I started to see if anyone had tried this before. And um, I know there was at least one or two people who were doing an extremely stealthy version of this. Um, and because the only reason I know is because he emailed me and said like, hey, I tried this too. Um, and those, it's unlikely uh, you would ever be able to actually catch. But um, I also saw some examples of what looked like, I don't know, people who were kind of doing this manually. They would sit at their computer for like four or five hour stretches and just like literally do the exact same thing, go through the search results and just retweet, retweet, retweet. Um, so I guess it depends how much you want, uh, how insane you want your entrance to be able to be, to be able to tell the difference between a person who spends four hours versus a script. Um, you can also try to make it harder uh, to programmatically enter. And you can do this by adding a second step, like you know, asking a question or something. This works OK, but it's not great because um, all you have to do, because everything on Twitter is public, is look to see what everyone else is responding to this question about and then just repeat it. Um, so this may stem like some really naive attempts. And you can also try running it on another platform. Um, it seems like it's more difficult to make a legitimate looking fake Facebook account than it is a fake Twitter account. Um, and it can also be tied to a real identity, which Twitter account obviously isn't. Um, and finally, you just have to accept the fact that if you're running a contest, people are going to try to game it. Ever since people have been running contests, people have been trying to game them, and that's kind of the way it's always going to be. So that's just part of doing it. Um, so again, here's the list of stuff uh, if you want to look over it. Um, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, I guarantee it's 100% human-generated content, um, then that's my Twitter username. Thanks.